Thank you, Marianne, and welcome into the Lord's house as we uh, gather for worship. Today in the uh, church year, it is St. Michael and All Angels Sunday, so our hymns and our readings and the sermon and everything will be around uh, that theme uh, for this morning on this uh, last Sunday uh, here in September. If you are a guest or visitor, and I know we have a few of you with us today, it's great to have you join with us as we... Uh, all worship together, and uh, we pray the Lord's blessings on your time in His house. Our order of worship is the Divine Service 3, so all of our liturgy is printed out in your worship folder. The opening hymn is 670, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. We will stand on the fourth and final verse.
God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that my nature is sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as the called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament reading for St. Saint Michael's and All Angels Sunday is from Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 through 14, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And you can find that on the back of your bulletin. And behold, the hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent. To you. And when you, he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for, the fir, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God. Your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. 
The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia, and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn into righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. We will join together as the Lord's people in reading the epistle, also in the back of your bulletin, Revelation 12, 12, the verses are 7 through 12, and we read, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not, not their lives, even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. Will you please rise for our Holy Gospel? Our Holy Gospel lesson on this St. Michael and all angels is from Matthew 18, verses 1 through 11, and this will be our sermon text. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name, he receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven... Their angels always see the face of my Father, who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord. Be God. Please be seated.
died so we might live. Amen. Texas is going to serve the base of our message for this morning on St. Michael and all angels. This is our gospel from Matthew 18, verses 1 through 11. Dear friends of Christ, I was blessed to have a step-grandfather for 27 years after my grandma had been widowed for 16 years. years. Now many of you know that he lived to be 102 years old. He was a faithful Christian. Now when he was around 90, he still liked to drive. Now my grandparents lived in a trailer on a busy four-lane highway in Kenosha, Wisconsin. My grandpa Dan figured he could pull out in traffic and they would stop for him. One afternoon, Grandpa Dan, two of his sons-in-law and myself went golfing west of Kenosha. We had to take a two-lane highway to the course and Grandpa Dan was all over the road on the way. Without even looking at me, one of his son-in-laws who was sitting in the front asked, Chad, do you believe in angels? I answered, yes. I asked him if he believed in angels, and he replied without missing a beat, I sure do today. We think of angels when we travel, and also at various other times, but what do we know about them? Can you relate? As you go about your daily routine, who is your guardian? Before we get to our verse and our text about angels, we first have to have some in-your-faith teaching from Jesus about personal greatness. The disciples want to know who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now this question has caused us quite a stir among these men. It was a bad question, but they had argued about it long enough. Let's take the question to Jesus. Now this question of greatness is today's question of success and power and glory. Who is successful? Who has more power? Who gets the glory? Some have been pushed since childhood toward these endeavors. Maybe you are in the midst of a power struggle right now at work or at home with a spouse, with a child. In his book, Counterfeit God, Tim Keller has an entire chapter on the idols of power and glory. And he takes it all the way back to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve didn't like the limits God put on their power. Keller writes, we gave in to this temptation. And now it's part of our nature. Rather than accept our finitude and dependence on God, we desperately seek ways to assure ourselves that we still have power over our own lives. But this is an illusion. So the athletic Hulk bullies the wimpy kid at school. Two execs enjoy a cocktail after another round of downsizing with little compassion for those who didn't make it. They feel the power. Power and success will ultimately disappoint. I am no fan of Tom Brady, the star quarterback for the New England Patriots, who, as you know, has won numerous Super Bowls and awards. But he said this a few minutes back in 2007. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? There's got to be more than this. The interviewer then asked, what's the answer? Brady replied, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. 
When Jesus answers the disciples' question, he puts an object lesson in front of them, a child. This is an example of true greatness. A child is dependent upon their parents for care and nurture. A child is humble. You see, it's the great reversal. Instead of looking up a ladder to see how great we can be, we look down to see how little we must become. The power and the glory belong to God. We are dependent upon Him who is your guardian. Jesus became like a little one. He humbled Himself unto death, even death on a cross. In humility, He leaned on His Father in prayer. And as He died for the sins of the whole world on the cross, He whispered a traditional bedtime prayer from Psalm 31.5, Into your hand I commit my spirit. Faith calls us to trust God for our eternal life. That in grace He has provided everything for our salvation. Jesus says in verse 10, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Jesus is saying here we should not be deceived by the littleness of little ones. You see, these little ones have attending them mighty angels who come from the very presence of the Heavenly Father. And on this St. Michael and All Angels Day, we remember the victory of the Archangel Michael and the good angels over Satan in Revelation 12, our epistle lesson for this morning. We remember the angel Gabriel in Luke 1 carrying the news to Mary that she would give birth to the Savior of the world. We also celebrate the work of angels who guard and protect God's people just like they did on the way that day to the golf course. And the angels also ministered to Jesus in his time of temptation. So who is your guardian? It's our Lord. It's his holy angels. Because Jesus, the servant of God, trumps our desire for power and glory by pointing us to a child and to the angels. Do you believe? I pray that you can say, I sure do. Today. Amen.
And then before I get to the end, I also have a prayer request I will be praying as well. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. And we have come at your bidding to plead on behalf of all your people in Christ and for all people as they have need. Almighty God, you have surrounded us with your love and favor and sent for angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, to do your bidding on our behalf. We are grateful for the many ways that you watch over, protect, defend, and keep us, your people, against the forces of temptation, despair, and evil. Lord, in your mercy, Mighty God, you have made all things and given the stewardship of creation to us. Make us wise and discerning as we explore the mysteries of your creative power throughout the world that you have made. And keep us from abusing both the gift and the responsibility we have to you and to all creation. Lord, in your mercy, Faithful Lord, you have redeemed us so that we may live new and holy lives, seeking not the desires of our hearts, but your will and command above all. Reveal to us how best to serve you and do your work here on earth, and lead us to show forth our faith by doing good works that glorify your name and serve our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, Loving God, you have borne our grief and carried our sorrows even to death. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer illness and affliction of body or mind, and grant them relief, comfort, and healing according to your gracious will. We now take a moment to remember those that we know in our hearts. Also the caregivers in hospitals, nursing facilities, and homes, that they may act with compassion toward those in need of care. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we have a prayer of thanksgiving this morning for the 90 years that you have granted to Cleo Cordy. You have kept her faithful throughout that time. You have been her rock and her fortress during her ups and downs during the valleys and the the mountains. You have also blessed her with a wonderful family, many of who are here this morning. We thank you for that and for all the ways that you have watched over her. We pray, Lord, that if it be your will, you would grant her many more years to be your servant in the church and to serve you and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, in the Savior's name, I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ in true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which Christ presents his body and his blood to us for forgiveness. That you take note of and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood. And that you then externally receive the bread and wine, that is, his body and blood as a guarantee and pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command and his own words, administer and receive this sacrament.
pray together the Lord's Prayer at the top of page 5. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and abide with you always.